Well, first of all, I'm one of those people who prefers the term uh, stratified medicine rather than personalized medicine because what we really are doing and what we are capable of doing now is to um, identify groups of patients who have some similarities and in whom we can make progress in improving their treatment. Uh, there are some circumstances in which the treatments are literally personalized, the development of vaccines for particular tumors, for, for example, but there aren't many of those, and uh, that's why I prefer stratified. One thing that didn't seem to be emphasized enough in the discussion today was the fact that, uh, well, there were concerns from some individuals that stratified medicine, personalized medicine, wasn't moving quickly enough, that there hadn't been enough progress, that there were too few stratifiers that would allow us to identify successful treatments. But there is another way to look at that same information. This is, it's not so much a glass which is 75% empty as one which is now getting to be 25% full. And what happens each time you pick off 5% of patients with one sort of uh, characteristic of their tumor and another 5% with another characteristic and another, um, then you have the remaining group which is now not as heterogeneous as it had been. And it's easier to study at that group and identify further stratifiers that will carry the field forward. This has actually happened across the board in breast cancer for many, many years before we had molecular stratifiers. It's what we were doing with estrogen and progesterone receptors, and then later with HER2, so that we identified what was left, which included a group which is now called triple negative, and it's able to be studied on its own with progress happening there as well. So stratified medicine isn't just which ones we have a drug for today, but it's the whole process of separating patients out into more coherent categories, each of which can make progress faster. Part of the problem with stratified medicine has been the fact that particular companies or particular universities are often studying one specific biomarker, one specific group uh, for one particular targeted treatment. And that means they've got to screen very large numbers of patients and only a few will be eligible for the studies they're running and many will not. And that is an inherent pitfall in the way the field has developed. But there's a way to address it and I think it's important and that is to have uh, programs of trials or as in the case of Tim Mon's Focus 4 trial, um, a, a, an umbrella under which many such biomarker stratified trials are on, ongoing. And that means that patients can effectively be brought, can be screened, and can be then segregated into one of several different comparisons that are going on. In other words, it's a much more efficient way to, to carry stratified medicine forward, and it leaves fewer patients disappointed because there isn't a trial for them to go into.